Embark on a transformative journey with the anti to do list. This is a groundbreaking concept that unveils the daily habits that you need to ditch for a more purposeful and fulfilling life. From banishing complaints to reclaiming your time from low value tasks, each rule is a powerful step towards unlocking your true potential. Join me in breaking free from the shackles of negativity, distractions, and unproductive routines. Let's go. My anti to do list the things that I want to avoid on a daily basis. So the first thing is I do not want to complain about anything. If there's a thing within your control, then go do something about it. If the thing is out of your control, then it's just a waste of energy to complain about it. So the way I look at things, there are things that matter and then there are things that you can control. That intersection is what you should focus on. So there's a second part to this. While you're working on a certain task or a problem, there is a previous problem that is still lingering around. It is basically leeching on your mental capacity and it inhibits you from moving ahead. So what I like to do is to ask myself the following questions. I will ask myself, do you have a problem? Yes, no. If the answer is no, then don't worry about it. And if the answer is yes, I will ask the second question. Can I do something about it? And if the answer is no, then don't worry about it. But if the answer is yes, then don't worry about it since you already have a way to go about it. What I'm trying to say here is that even though you're not attending to the problem right away, you are at least addressing this mentally so that now you can give yourself permission to move on. Number two on my anti to do list is do not allow negative people to steal your energy. So stop avoiding difficult conversations. Growth requires discomfort. Maintain a growth mindset in all of your relationships and embrace the need to remove toxicity from your life. So there are times where you need to have a difficult conversation, whether it's with your peer, your colleague or your partner, but you just have to. You just have to do it today or you just need to set up the time for it. But if you do address it, basically you free up a lot of your mental space and your capacity to move forward and perform at your highest level. Third on my entity to do list is do not allow for more than one hour of inactivity. There are times when I'm working on a certain task and no matter how much time passes by, I'm just not making progress. That is a clear signal to me that either I am hindered by my creative levels or I'm just not interested to get it done. In those cases, basically what I do is just get up and start moving. Walking has proven to work for me. It gives me a rush on new energy and creativity to work on my task or problem. So the next thing on my anti to do list is do not graze on low value tasks. The Parkinson law says that work expands to fill the time allotted for its completion. So when you don't set fixed windows for managing low value tasks, for example, checking emails, you end up grazing on them, spending an entire day doing them so slowly and inefficiently. So create short, discrete windows for processing low important tasks. A Pomodoro timer would be a great effective way to handle this for you. Just set up a 25 minute timer and complete all of your tasks within that time frame and move on. Next thing on my list, do not become an ostrich. An ostrich will bury its head into the sand to avoid danger. And a lot of human beings behave the same way when they encounter new information that challenges their existing beliefs or views. They care more about being right than finding the truth. Embrace new information that forces you to change your mind. And this is one way to expand your comfort zone. When you feel overwhelmed in this manner, it is healthy, so go ahead and embrace it. Next on my to-do list, do not have your phone out when you have people around you. And this one's kind of important. When you're working, work hard. And when you're playing, play hard. Strive to bring present, focused energy in all areas of your life and never let your phone come in between you and the people around you. If you're struggling with this, I would recommend setting up an alarm. So let's just say you're going out for dinner with your colleagues and you plan to spend two hours with them. All you got to do is now set up an alarm for two hours. And this way, you now have a mental reminder that you have an alarm set and there's zero reasons to check your phone in between. Seventh on my anti to do list, do not hit the snooze button. This is not about sleep, but it's about stacking evidence that you are the captain of your ship. And as you keep practicing this, your discipline, your willpower gets developed and strengthened. 
and nothing has changed in terms of your effort. It's just that now your mind and your body knows that when you mean it, you mean it. Next on my anti to do list, do not say yes to things under the assumption of having more time in the future. So let's just face it, you won't have more time in the future. And if you wouldn't want to do the thing tomorrow, there's just no point in you saying, yes, I'm going to get this done next month. So making these excuses is really counterproductive to your mind and your body as you lose respect and hold on to your own words over time. This small action would then start creeping into other areas of your life. And how you do something is how you do everything. Ninth on my anti-to-do list, do not take calls or video meetings without a clear purpose. Calls or video meetings without any clear agenda or purpose is where your joy and energy goes to die. And I'm not even saying this lightly. If it can be an email, it should be an email or text. I would also go on to argue that this would include brainstorming sessions. As much as brainstorming sessions is about exploring the furthest and most creative ideas, you will need to have a specific portion or segment that you wish to brainstorm. I am pretty sure we have all been there in those sessions where we digress and digress until we get nowhere. So let's get clear. Tenth on my anti to do list, do not check your phone within the first 15 minutes of waking up and the last 15 minutes of going to bed. We all have enough technology addiction in our lives. Create space, give yourself a few fixed windows of unintentional tech avoidance to breathe. This helps with your mind and your body and how it's set up to wind up and wind down. I would urge you to try it for just 30 days and see how much more entrenched you are with yourself. My anti-to-do list also has a to-do each day. So before winding down to sleep, I sit down to meditate. You don't necessarily need to meditate, but to the effect of it would be just more than sufficient. I would urge you to sit down, take a deep breath and let it go as slow as possible. Now, close your eyes and go through everything that you've gone through, whether it's good or bad in the day. You're basically addressing each event for a moment without stagnating on any one of them. And once you've caught up to the present moment, give thanks for the wonderful day it has been and look forward to the next. Next one, do not allow comparison, envy or jealousy to enter your headspace. When you feel it creeping in, default to curiosity instead. Ask what is that person doing that you can learn from. We default to comparison because that's how our basis for survivability has been built upon. To oversimplify this, person finds food there, we go there. Person builds a house, we build a house. However, what occurs in our head to help with surviving often becomes the root for our suffering when we get too attached to the specificity of the possession. When someone lives in a large house, if you allow envy or jealousy, you are using the wrong lens. Last one on my anti to do list, do not text or check social media through the course of the day. Similar to the earlier point, establish fixed windows where you will read and reply to your messages. Put your phone on do not disturb mode, turn on grayscale mode to make the icons and notifications less appealing. Great! So to create your own anti-to-do list, sit down and write down the things that you are struggling with personally and professionally. Use my list as a spark to get ideas flowing, but make changes, additions and subtractions as necessary. Hit the subscribe button if you like what you're watching and if this is resonating with you, I love to hear your comments and I sincerely hope this helps. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.